In this video, we're looking at percent of error featuring the world famous plain M&Ms. So what we did is I looked at this box here that you might find at a movie theater of plain M&Ms. And I made some guesses. I guessed how many total there would be in the box and how many there would be of each color. So you can see I did that for each of the colors. So for example, I guessed 20 for both the orange, the red, and the green. And I predicted it would be 150 total. So what I did is I went through here and I started actually counting up the results. So you see some of them were fairly close, like blue was 30, I guessed, it was actually 26. Some of them not so much. If you look at brown, I thought it was going to be 35, and I actually only had 13. I thought it was going to be a total of 150, but actually we only had 150 or 105 M&Ms in the whole box. So what we're going to do next is we're going to find out what, what was the amount of my error or my mistake. So the way we find the amount of error is pretty simple. We're just going to find the difference between what I predicted and what actually happened. So for yellow, you can see that I just subtracted 25 and 13. There's a difference of 12. So as I go through each of these, I'm just finding what was the difference between each of them. Now for orange, for example, if I went 20 minus uh, 29, I would actually get a negative 9. So what we're kind of doing here is using the absolute values. So each one's just going to be a positive. And you can see the differences for each one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate my percent of error for each one. But we're going to use this special equation right here. So it's actual amount, which is like the real answer, the correct answer, times the percent of the error as a decimal equals the amount of error. So as we talked about, these were my original predictions right here. And so what we have here coming up is the actual results you know, where I compare what we actually predicted and what actually happened. And then the final column over here was the difference. The two columns that are in red are columns that we're going to use to fill in the numbers for this equation. Okay, So on the first one, which was for yellow, the real or actual amount of yellow M&Ms I had was 13. I don't know the percent yet. That's what we're going to try to find. But the amount of error, how much I missed my calculations by, or my guess was by 12. So what we have right here is a one-step equation. In this case, 13p equals 12. So we're going to do the reverse to solve this one-step equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by 13. On the left, I'm just left with the variable. And on the right, we're going to divide 12 by 13. So I'll use my little handy-dandy calculator. And you can see I get 0.923, and it keeps going a little further. What we do is we multiply this decimal by 100 to find a percent. Now what you're going to notice is the decimal always kind of moves two times to the right. So we can say this was a 92% error. So the next one we're going to look at is blue M&Ms. So on the blue, we really had a total of 26, and I was only four off. So you'd think my guess was pretty good here. Just like the last one, we're going to divide both sides by 26, because that's the total amount we have. And when we do that, on the left or on the right side, we end up with 0.154. Once we multiply by 100 and kind of round it, we get 15%. You could also say 15.4 if you'd wanted. Next up is the orange M&Ms. So on the orange M&Ms, if we look over it here, you see that we had a total of 29 M&Ms in this bag. And I was off by 9. I thought, I think it was 20. It was actually 29. So I divide both sides by 29. We're trying to get rid of the 29 and get the variable by itself, which we just did. 9 divided by 29 is 0 0.31. And that would round off to 31% error. So not too bad. If we look at red next, you can, again, you can see we had a, the, the correct amount of M&Ms that were red was 11. I thought it was going to be 20, so I was off by 9. I divide both sides by 11, and so I'm going to get P equals 0.818. And obviously it goes a little further than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this one 82%. The 8 would actually round up the 1. Next is brown. Now this is the one that was probably the most brutal. You can see I thought it was going to happen 35 times. And it actually happened 13, so a big amount of error here. So again, we're looking at that 22. So you can see I got 13P. And I was off by 22. Divide both sides by 13 again. That's going to give me P on the left side. And then 22 divided by 13 is 1.692. We're going to multiply by 100 or move the decimal twice to the right. We end up with 169% error. Pretty brutal on the uh, brown pick. The final one is green. We really had a total of 13. I was off by 7. So not too bad. Again, we set up this real simple one-step equation. So 13P equals 7. 
we're going to divide both sides by 13. When I do that left side again, we're going to have just the variable p, which was our goal. The right side, when I take 7 divided by 13, I end up with 0.538. So if we multiply by 100, we get 53.8, and or we could just call it 54%. Finally, if we look at the total here, you can see I was off by 45. I thought it was going to be 150. It was 105. So I used the 105 because that's the actual amount we really had. And we are equation 105, P equals 45. I divide both sides by 105. And when I do that, the left, just the P again for the percent. On the right side, I get 0.429. And again, it's going to round up. To, we're going to move it over twice because we're multiplying by 100. That 9 is going to round up to 2. And we end up with 43%. You can call it 42.9 if you wanted. Now, sometimes you might get some problems like this where they give you the amount of the error and the percent of error. And you have to find the actual, the real amount. So in this one right here, the amount of error was 5. And the percent of error was 20%. So we're going to write that as a decimal, 0 0.2 or 0 0.20. To calculate this kind of problem, it's also a one-step equation. You see we put t in there for our variable. So our problem is t times 0.2 equals 5. We want to get the variable, in this case t by itself, so we're going to do the reverse. Divide by 0.2 on both sides. The left side is going to be the t for the variable. And on the right, 5 divided by 0.2 is going to be 25. So 25 was actually the, the, the total amount. The last one, like this type of problem, we know the amount of error was 6. We know the percent of error was 15%, so we'll put 0.15. And again, we have a one-step equation. So we'll use t for the actual, just like for total. So we have total times 0.15 equals 6. I'm going to divide both sides by a 0.15. Again, we're doing the reverse. Once I divide both sides by 0.15, on the left side, we're just going to have the t. On the right side, we're going to take 6 divided by 0 0.1500, or 0 0.15, and that's going to give us 40. Now, sometimes they're going to give you the actual amount and the percent of error. This is actually the easiest one if you ever get this kind. So the actual or the real amount was 60. Our error was 40%. And all we have to do is just basically multiply these straight across. So if I take 60 times 0.4, we would get 24. So the amount of error would be 24. And here's the last example. So let's say we had 150 was the real amount. Our percent of error was 24%. We want to know well, how much were we off? How much was our, how big was our mistake? We're just going to multiply these two together. And we end up with 300, I'm sorry, 36, which would be 24% um, of 150. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully you found this helpful. Consider subscribing to Land of Math, and we'll catch you later.